Okay, just a point here on ketosis. So, um, what the heck is ketosis for starters? So, ketones, I mentioned previously, is a byproduct of fat metabolism. So, when you break down fat, you produce ketones. This is a good thing. Now, some of, it, some of you might freak out because you might know somebody with type 1 diabetic, who is a type 1 diabetic, and they measure their ketones. And when their ketones go to high, it can be life-threatening, very dangerous. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what is nutritional ketosis. You see there I put nutritional ketosis is like a drizzle, whereas your diabetic ketoacidosis is very different. It is like a hurricane. They are, you know, we're not comparing apples with apples here. What the amounts of ketones that you are going to get in your blood when you eliminate carbohydrates and have a high fat diet is minimal, but it's sufficient to give you the benefits. When a diabetic has ketone levels rising, it's a big problem. And that's a whole other physiological story which I won't go into. Now when we don't have carbohydrates in our diet, ketones become the fuel for our brain. That's what you will be using. There is something that's called keto adaptation, or some people refer to it as fat adaptation. This is the point where your body switches. Now, when you do, when you start a low carbohydrate diet, and you've been all the time on a high carbohydrate diet, you take all those carbohydrates out of your diet, you are going to feel like crap. So anybody here who's going to do this, beware that you are going to feel horrible. At least for a week, probably two weeks, some people even longer. Because your body is so used to using carbohydrates as fuel, when you take them away, it doesn't even know how to access the fats anymore. And you just, you just, don't have any energy, you get a headache, you feel dizzy, you feel horrible, you get in a bad mood, you shout at everyone, you cry for everything. Because it's horrible, it's a horrible place to be. But then one day you wake up and you've got all the energy in the world. And you go, what the hell? And hello, you're, you've changed. You have down-regulated the whole carbohydrate metabolism thing and you've up-regulated the whole fat-burning thing. Your body has found a way to use the fats and now the fats are giving you energy. When you get to that point, you are what we call fat-adapted. Now all you are using is fat <coughs> to fuel your day. So you will burn fat for everything that you do. That's the place where you want to be. Yes, you'll lose weight initially on this diet. Most likely in those first few weeks, you'll lose a few kilos, but the real weight loss and the real benefits will come when you hit this. Because then it becomes effortless. Initially it's hard because you feel like crap. But when you are fat adapted, it is great. And then you just keep on losing weight until your body finds that comfortable level and then you just maintain it where you, you should be. Weigh yourself or it's not good idea. Look, if you had, if you had some, if you were diabetic, or you um, had a real reason to wean yourself, maybe. But I'd say, oh, you might as well just go cold turkey. And you might, as, and what, but you, what you want to do is pick a time where that's possible. So if you've got a deadline at work on Friday, you're not starting on Monday. <laughs> You know, maybe you want to do it when you've got a bit of a break from something heavy that's going on in your life, or you want to pick the right moment to do this. You know, if you're moving house or something, it's probably not a good idea. Or if you're getting married on the weekend, you know, like you want to pick the timing. But also, timing is never going to be perfect, so don't just put it off and put it off and put it off. Okay? How low do we need to go? So I'm not advocating a zero carbohydrate diet here, 
I'm advocating a low carbohydrate diet. How low do you need to go in order for this ketosis thing to happen? Everybody is different. Everybody is different. Ladies, sorry to say, and I know you're the majority here, we generally are lower than males. 50 grams is probably a max, an absolute maximum. And down to about 25 grams of carbs, grams of carbs. 50 grams of carbs per day is a max, and probably around about 25 you know, is, is where most people will hit true ketosis. Look at banana, how many carbs, how many grams are there? You're over. Mm -hmm. One and a half apples will give you 25 grams of carbohydrates. Bananas over 50. No, over 25, sorry. Over 20. Banana, banana is about 25 to 30 grams. Yeah. I'll give you a list in a second with a little bit of an indication of how, where those carbs are coming from. But remember, you're going to get a little bit of carbs from veggies. And so in the initial period, that's it. You actually don't really want to add anything else into it because, believe it or not, you're also getting carbs, a little bit of carbs from meat, from all these different things because... The meat, you know, the, the cow and whoever else, they ate products that had carbs in them, so they've got carbs in them. So, you know, you really have to take them away so that you think you're having zero carbs and then you're probably having about 25 grams of carbs. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not telling you this is easy. Initially, it is hard. But when you get past that first month, there's nothing better. Because you just feel great about what you're eating. You're eating whole food that's good for you. You know, you, you actually, uh, I've read somewhere, you know, if, you, if you can identify what the food actually is, then eat it. So you know, if you're having a, a piece of chicken, and you can see that that came with a chicken leg, and you can see it, oh yeah, okay, you can eat. But when you're having a nugget, you know, like, what is that? <laughs> yes, eat the chicken skin. Yes, absolutely. Okay, I just wanted to touch on a few things here about what ketosis earlier on was used for. Before insulin was identified and used to treat diabetics, all diabetics were prescribed a ketogenic diet to keep them under control. There's um, epilepsy can be controlled in kids, and they actually still do it to try and avoid putting kids onto anticonvulsive medication. They will put them onto a ketogenic diet. Some people can't tolerate anticonvulsive medications. They put them onto a ketogenic diet. Weight reduction, more fat burning, the cardiovascular be uh, benefits. There's also lots of skin conditions that are cleared up because of a ketogenic diet, acne being one of the standouts, um, eczema, all sorts of things that's just coming out of your system, basically. Um, there's a great YouTube video. Um, there's many of them out there, but there's a doctor by the name of Kieran Rooney who speaks about cancer and ketosis and the benefits. Just briefly, cancer cells love sugar. And um, they don't like ketones. That's a very brief idea of it. It's quite an intense video to watch there on YouTube. It goes into a lot of biochemistry. But if you're able to get your head around that and just listen to the main points, you might get a lot out of that. Consistent energy levels on this way of eating. You know, when you, you're eating carbs, you go up and down, and at 4 o'clock in the afternoon is a typical time to crash, and then you need something to pick yourself up. You don't get this with, with this way of eating. You just got consistent energy levels all the time. And so much more. Okay. Um, here's a little once you once you've gone through this initial part, it doesn't mean that you have to then maintain 25 grams of carbohydrate for the rest of your life. Once your body knows how to do the fat burning thing, it's not going to um, forget how to do that the minute you eat a carbohydrate. So you can sort of slip in and out of ketosis a lot easier once you are fully fat adapted.
So when you're fully cat adapted and you've done, so you've, if you look down here, when you're trying to um, do that fat adaptation thing, grams of carbs per day need to be less than 50 grams. Once you've done that fat adaptation thing, you can then push it a bit, probably up to about 100 grams of carbohydrate a day, and you can still be losing weight and getting all the benefits. Some people will find once they go above 60 or 70, no good. And then they have to bring it back down. So that's, you know, you need to play around with that. I keep my carbs pretty low all the time. Very occasionally now do I have something. I probably haven't had anything in about three or four weeks to, to take my carbs beyond, beyond about 30 grams. So I keep it low because I know as soon as I start pushing it closer to 80, 100, I don't, my body doesn't agree with it. I start feeling bloated and whatever occurs. And I also feel like I then can't exercise as well because I'm not accessing my fat to exercise, to run or whatever it might be. Once you get to a weight that you're absolutely satisfied with, some people can then push it a bit higher. There's you know, also athletes who are exercising heaps. So Joey did the Ironman a couple of weeks ago. For those of you who don't know what an Ironman is, you swim 3.8 kilometres, you ride 180 kilometres, and then you run a full marathon, 42 k's. Most cut-off time for this event is 17 hours. So it's a big day out. <laughs> That's his ninth one. And he did it on zero carbohydrates. Zero. So if you think you need a banana before you go to the gym in the morning, <laughs> you don't. When you are fat adapted, you do not. Okay. But some athletes... There's other implications with athletes because they're backing up and backing up and backing up. They actually probably need a little bit more carbohydrate to um, help with all that recovery and a whole lot of other issues. And they can push it up to, and, and literature is saying, you know, a Tour de France type athlete, maybe push it to about 200 grams a day. I don't, you know, none of us are exercising at that sort of level. So that's just a nice indication. And also to know that you don't have to be on their extremeness forever. Yes, you need to do that initially. So give yourself a good month to six weeks. Some people say it takes them six weeks to become fully fat adapted. Um, so allow that time. If you would like more information about easy low carb living, please go to acaciahealth.com.au forward slash nutrition.